this is our second podcast of unit about solutions and we have been talking about solubility again because it's solutions so today we started to look at the gizmo and looking at some things that affect solubility and one of the things we should have seen was the temperature and usually usually when you heat the substance you're going to increase the solubility what happens is the molecules move faster and they are you are going to get more molecules that can surround the sol the solvent molecules that can surround the solute molecules okay it doesn't happen with everything it depends on some factors that we'll probably talk about more in AP but just know that usually you do see an increase okay one thing that always helps it is decreasing the um, size of the particles. So if you decrease the size of the particle, you're increasing the surface areas. All of these, what happens is the solute, solvent molecules need to come in attraction. We watched the video of salt being dissolved and how the water molecules surround it. So the more you increase those connections, the contact, you're going to make a better, excuse me, you're going to increase the solubility. Okay, agitating, stirring. Okay, all of these kind of think about you've probably done yourself. What dissolves better? If I have iced tea or hot tea? Well, hot tea, would, excuse me, what would dissolve sugar better? Sugar will dissolve better. Okay, if I have a sugar cube or powdered sugar, powdered sugar dissolves better. And if I use a sugar cube or when as soon as I put some sugar in, what do I do? do I stir it. So all of these factors you probably have done yourself without really even thinking about it. Okay, so solubility then, if we talk about how much a compound solubility is, we're talking about how much can actually dissolve. And you can't just keep adding it, adding it, adding it. It's not unlimited because what happens is you can kind of think of it like you run out of solvent molecules or the solvent molecules get full. Remember how it walked, or they surrounded the salt and the chlorine? There's only so many solvent. There's a l limit to how much can dissolve. That's called the substance's solubility. So when we're talking about that, if I have less solute than the maximum that can dissolve, we say the solution is unsaturated. Unsaturated, you can still dissolve more. If I have a saturated solution, that's the maximum amount that can dissolve. And if something is saturated, you would actually probably start to see solid on the bottom of the beaker because you've, it cannot dissolve anymore. So if you add extra, it's going to be in the beaker. Okay, sometimes we can get a special case and that's called a super saturated. And a super saturated isn't something that normally happens. It's just some special cases. And we're going to actually kind of look at a video that kind of shows what happens if it's super saturated. And you just force more to go in that solution than it normally should be. Okay, now saturated is different than concentration. We're going to ca calculate a concentration. So it can be dilute. Dilute just means there's very little solvent. But some substances have a very low solubility. So it could be very dilute. You don't have very much dissolved, but it could still be saturated. So they do not mean the same thing. And a concentrated solution means there is a lot of solute. And if, so if I have something that is very, very soluble, that it could be pretty concentrated and still be unsaturated, that more could still dissolve. Um, dilute, think if you don't follow the recipe for a cool, cool recipe, yeah, mixing Kool-Aid and water, that if you don't follow it and you add too much water and it tastes weak, doesn't have very much dissolved in the amount of water, that's dilute. Okay, if you made um, it and you use half the water, then that would be very concentrate because for the solute compared to the amount of the solvent, there's more, be more concentrated. So the one other word, two words, I guess, excuse me, it's miscible and emissible. These are talking about two 
solutions to, or two liquids being uh, mixed together. So miscible is mixable. So it's just a word, again, a technicality. We talk about a solid being solu soluble in water, for instance, but I would say that oil is immiscible, immiscible with water because you know that oil and water do not mix, so therefore they are immiscible. Okay, these were the graphs we were making on the gizmo today. Now these graphs get very used, to, very comfortable with them because we're, this is what we are going to be seeing. So the graphs that we made today on the gizmo, you made a couple of these. So if I look at this graph, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different substances. So instead of giving you nine individual graphs, we've given you one graph that has all of the substances. Okay, a couple key things. This is telling you how many grams of solute can dissolve and look at 100 grams of water. That's very, very important. Okay, it's look at what's down here is the temperature. So what this does is tell me what how it changes. So look at these that have a big slope. These are the ones then that can do, that heat really helps it. So as you add heat, more dissolves. Okay, there's the one here. This is actually ammonia. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. That's a gas. Okay, there is a few compounds that it doesn't change very much or it actually decreases, and that's why we said usually. Okay, so this line is the saturated. So if I'm asking, if I want to know how much can dissolve, let's say like right here, see that point? So at 50 degrees, I would say for ammonium chloride that at 50 degrees Celsius, 50 grams can dissolve in 100 grams of water. You have to include the water because it can change if you change the amount of water. So let's look at some of these that we have. These are the types of questions you're going to have to be able to answer. So what is the solubility then of a saturated solution of KNO3 at 10 degrees. Okay, saturated solution means you're going to find where it crosses the line. So sometimes it's finding, okay, so here's KNO3, then look at 10 degrees. So come up 10 degrees, and you follow the KNO and line down. So it's like, where does it cross the line? Okay, right here. Now this is again, we're going to give us a range. What does that look like? And this is where my little about. 22 grams of KNO3 dissolve in every 100 grams of water. That's its solubility. So if it asks you the solubility, it's asking how much can dissolve. Okay, different ways I can ask. What compound is saturated? Okay, here's keywords. 80 grams, it's in 100 grams of water. What this means is you can use the graph. You can use the chart. You don't have to do any math because this matches this. If it's not, then we have to do a little bit of work, but it's easy work. So I need to find where these two points cross, 80 grams and 50 degrees. So I'm going to go 50 degrees, 80 grams, right here. So look at, I want to know, does something cross the line right there? Look at what's crossing that line. So it's on the line right there. So KNO3, is the compound that's saturated when 80 grams is dissolved. Okay, now the way you read this chart, if I had less than 80 grams, that's telling me the maximum. If I had less than 80, let's say if I had 70 grams, see how it falls below the line? I would say it's an unsaturated solution because 10 more grams could dissolve in it. Now if I said that 100 grams all dissolved, if you said 100 grams dissolved, that would have been a super saturated solution. So more than the max is super saturated, on the line is saturated, below the line is unsaturated. So other ways these can kind of look. What temperature would a solution containing 40 grams of potassium nitrate and 50 grams of water be saturated? 
Okay, well, we have to look at this. Here's the problem. This is in 50 grams, but to use this graph, it has to be in 100 grams. So you can kind of set yourself up a proportion. Well, if 50, 40 grams dissolves in 50 grams of water, how much would dissolve in 100 grams? Because it has to be in 100 to use this chart. You doubled, look what happens, doubled the water, so this is going to be times 2. So I need to find 80 grams in 100 grams of water is what I need to look at. So come over 80 grams. Where does it cover the graph? Or excuse me, where does it cover, uh, cross the KNO3 line? It crosses at 50 degrees Celsius. So I bring it down, and that's 50. So you're just reading the graphs. How many grams will crystallize, this means precipitate, from a saturated solution, okay, of KCl in 200 grams at 100 degrees? And then look what we're going to do. We're going to cool it to 20 degrees. Okay, if it's a saturated solution, so we have to look at 100 degrees. At 100 degrees, Where's KCl? Okay, so KCl is right here. So let's see. I'm gonna. This is about 56 grams will dissolve in 100 grams of water. Okay, but I have doubled the water, so I won't have 56 grams in a saturated solution since I'm doubling the water. 50, this would be 112 grams. So this is at 100 degrees Celsius. So you'll have 112 grams dissolving. Let's compare it then at 20 degrees. At 20 degrees, KCl, trying to follow it down, boom, right about here. So let's call that 32. 32 grams will dissolve in 100 grams of water, but again, we still have 200 grams, so that would be 64 grams. So 112 grams would dissolve at 100, but I'm going to cool it to 64, we're only 60, or excuse me, I'm going to cool it to 20, we're only 64 grams, so then we are going to subtract. So if you just subtract that's going to be what, 68 grams? No, let me try that again. Let's try 48 grams. So 48 grams are going to crystal out of your solution. How much sodium nitrate must be added to make a saturated solution in 50 grams of water at 10 degrees Celsius? Okay, sodium nitrate. So I find sodium nitrate, and you want to find it 50 grams at 10 degrees. Okay, so at 10 degrees, come up. Whoa, wow, straight line there. Come up. So look at what we know. 80 grams dissolves in 100 grams of water. That's from the graph. But I only have 50 grams of water. So this was divided by 2. So you're going to have to divide by 2. So 80 divided by 2. So 40 grams will dissolve in my 50 grams of water. Okay, the last question here. How does the gas of solubilities compare? Well, look at so how's the solubility of gases. Here's a gas. What do you see? Okay, it's opposite, which means gases solubility decreases with the temperature. Okay, so I've left you a kind of a question there. On a hot summer day, the fishermen go deep for the fish. Why? Think of a reason. And so we're going to start talking about that the next time we see you. Have a good day.